This is Stephanie from Rapid Resizer and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a faux stained glass project. So I want to talk a little bit more about the color tool that is available um, with Rapid Resizer Professional Edition. So I'm going to show you guys how useful it is for stained glass projects. Um, I know for a lot of you stained glass seems a little bit intimidating and I feel the same way so I've kind of come up with a little craft to just become familiar with this type of project. Um, so what I'm going to do is upload a pattern and I will show you guys how to do it. So. If you can't find any patterns that you like on the website, I found a really great free stained glass pattern website um, that I will share with you guys. Um, it's really good. There's lots on there and they are free. So I've chosen this little chickadee. I'm just going to crop this part out because I'm not going to take their suggestions. Sorry, spectrum glass. Okay, so it's already decided or guessed what I want to crop, so I'm going to go ahead and crop that. And now I'm going to erase these little letters here um, with the eraser. And I'll get that. Okay. So if you would like to keep track of your pieces here like they've done, um, the color tool will automatically number all of your pieces for you um, once you've colored them. If you want to kind of keep track of your pieces. So the color tool on Rapid Resizer Pro will fill in, recognize and fill in any line drawing like this. So as long as there are solid lines and white negative space, uh, you will be able to easily fill your design in with the hundreds of beautiful colors available. So let me just get rid of these and I will show you guys. So now I'm going to press print and I'm going to color my design. So if you guys aren't familiar with this tool, um, this is the color tool and what it allows you to do is choose a color and fill your design in and get a good sense of what it might look like depending on the colors that you choose. So any line drawing will work and ooh, that's such a pretty purple color. Okay, so it allows you to choose from any any of these colors so basically any color you want um, also if you have a pattern or a specific texture or anything you want to use in your design you can upload it here um, but if not there are literally hundreds of these beautiful color swatches to use in your design. Oh, they're so pretty. I never know which ones to choose. They're just so nice. Okay, so hmm. I'll just show you guys really quickly the different types of glass we have. So we've got the swirly kind, 
these beautiful vibrant colors, multicolored. We've got fabrics for quilting projects or whatever, hardwood, basically every type of wood you could think of. I don't know, I have never even heard of some of these. And then some more glass. So the possibilities are really endless here. Ooh, I just love these so much. Okay, so I'm going to go with a nice blue sky color here. And I'm going to fill that in. Okay, and now I'm going to, maybe I'll use this dark color for the bird, and then I'm going to go back and look for a nice cherry blossom pink. I'm not going to worry about using these specific colors. I'm just, I just want to give you guys a good example of what this tool does. So, filling in my design, and maybe I'll use some wood here for the branch. And I'll get a little Something dark for the little bird's head here. There we go. Okay, so this is what the color tool can do. Um, also, the materials list here um, depending on what size your project is going to be, it will give you the required materials needed. Um, this, if you're making a stained glass project or sewing or whatever. So this is also a really, really helpful tool that can save you a lot of time. So now that I have filled in my design, I'm going to print it. I'm going to print it in black and white though. Um, I just wanted to show you guys um, how this tool works and how you can kind of experiment with different colors um, before you start your designs. So I'm going to Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna print this black and white. Um, I'm gonna make it about probably about five inches wide. Um, and I'm just gonna use the black and white pattern and then I will show you guys what I'm gonna do next. So stay tuned. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing next is for this craft, I will be using just a piece of glass. Um, I found some really cheap, simple glass frames at a thrift store here. Um, so I'm just going to be using that for my piece of glass. But um, whatever kind of glass you can get your hands on, um, I find it's easiest to just use an old frame. Um, so I'm just going to put my printer image of my pattern that I've resized properly for my frame. I'm just going to actually put it inside the frame just so that it stays put while I work on this craft. Um, so if you don't have one of these, um, I would just suggest taping. Uh, your pattern to your piece of glass, but I'm going to put these clamps back on so it doesn't move.
Okay, so now that my pattern is secured, um, I'm going to take some black fabric glue. Um, I found this at Walmart. Um, the reason why I'm going to be using this is because it says dimensional, so I liked I liked the sounds of that because I want... I wanted something that would be a little more 3D um, and stand up so that the rest of my paint will kind of be contained in each cell. So I'm going to go ahead and just outline the black lines of my pattern with this dimensional fabric glue. Now, there's a bunch of different things you could use for this. Um, I just chose this because it's going to keep everything contained and it's also really really easy to apply. So um, trying to paint this on would be kind of difficult so it's easier for me to just kind of squeeze it on from the bottle like this and it has a really nice thin applicator. Um, I've seen other tutorials people have used a specific type of tape. Um, I couldn't find any tape that was um, thin enough to go around my design, but if you're making a big one, um, electrical tape might be helpful or, I don't know, you guys probably know better than I do what you're doing here. So, <laughs> I'm just going to continue filling in these lines. Okay. So, as you can see, this fabric paint goes on really nicely, and it stands up a bit. So, I know it seems kind of weird to be using um, fabric paint on glass, but that's okay. So, I'm just going to allow this to dry overnight, and once that's dry, I am going to get some tempera paint. So the reason why I'm using this type of paint is um, because it's cheap and uh, I'm not going to need a lot of it. Um, you could use different types of um, oil paint, acrylic, it doesn't really matter. I'm just wanting to get a little bit of pigment um, that I'm going to be mixing with my gloss medium. So I'm just going to mix up some colors quickly and I'm trying to avoid using the really chalky colors um, and I'm going to try and not use too much white just because I want light to still shine through the glass. Um, another thing you could do for this type of craft is to also use um, like a, a fabric dye like RIT. RIT and Mod Podge could also be a good way to do this but I'm just going to mix this in and don't worry when you add the Mod Podge it will kind of lighten the color that you've chosen and make it look a little bit lighter um, but it will dry the same color as you mixed it before you added the gloss medium. Um, so I'm just using this gloss because it dries kind of like a shiny, gummy um, consistency so it's easy to just kind of um, push the, the pigment around in the cell. I'll show you guys here. The fabric glue kind of allows it to stay contained. So I'm just carefully filling in 
this cell here. And if you touch some of the black lines, it's okay. Um, once the glass is flipped around, um, you won't you won't see any of those little mistakes. So I'm just going to continue mixing the colors. Um, you can just kind of play around with the ratio of gloss to color that you want. Um, I found it was helpful if you want the colors to be really subtle to water your paint down a little bit. Um, it's also easier for the cells to kind of fill up um, if you're um, paint is a little bit runnier, so just kind of experiment depending on the look you want. Um, if you want it to be pretty thick and glossy and gummy, um, add more more of the Mod Podge. And if you want it to be kind of more watery and milky, um, I would just do mostly paint and water and just a little bit of the gloss medium, um, if that's the look you're going for. So I'm just going to fill these all in here and build my design. So again the colors that I designed on the Rapid Resizer software aren't going to be exact. Um, I'm just kind of mixing as I go here. Um, but it is really helpful to have the color tool just to kind of get a sense and plan out what you want to do. So I'm going to try and stick to the colors that I chose in earlier in the tutorial. So I'm going to go with a nice pink for the cherry blossoms. You can see I'm not using a lot of paint. Um, you really don't need much. That's why I just bought this little um, school school paint kit. Um, I chose tempera paint just because it can easily wash off things. Um, I tend to spill and get things all over myself and oil paints tend to be a little more toxic so everything I'm using um, the Mod Podge is non-toxic also so don't have to worry about toxic exposure when you're crafting. So you can see here when I'm mixing my pink color it's kind of becoming a little bit lighter um, which can be kind of deceiving but the paint will always kind of um, dry back to the color that you mixed prior to the Mod Podge. So I'm going to fill these in And here for my blue background area, I want the colors, because the pieces that are going to be the background sky color are really big, I want them to be without um, brush strokes and I want it to just be one continuous looking um, thin kind of milky layer. So I'll give you guys a quick look here. Um, I'm making it really thin. I don't want there to be any kind of brush strokes visible, so I'm going to try and make it as even as possible. Um, but depending on the style you want, you can use a swirling brush motion, or you could do little dabs if you want to add some texture. But for these pieces, I just want to get it as smooth as possible. Um, so this of course is going to dry a lot um, lighter and thinner I'm assuming so um, it's better to use less um, and you can always go back and add 
more layers on. I just want to do these really thin though so they're nice and subtle and allow lots of light to come through. So I'm just going to fill these in. And if you run into any problems, um, just correct your um, project with a piece of wet paper towel. Um, just make sure you do that before the gloss medium dries because um, it kind of turns into like a plastic skin type texture that um, is harder to work with. So just make sure you correct everything. Um, while your paint is still wet because it dries pretty quickly. Okay, so this is my faux stained glass project that I've made using just some basic school paint, Mod Podge, and fabric glue. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and I hope it's something that you are interested in trying. Um, I will post the link to the website that has the free stained glass patterns and you guys can check that out. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching and have an awesome day.